Hello, my name is Joanne Hewins. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I have a blog that you can find at lovetocreate.typepad.com. I'd love for you to go look at some of my creations there. Today, I'm going to tell you how to make this card. It is a swinging door. You pull this out right here. A swinging door or some people call it a Dutch door, a double Dutch door uh, opening card. And I am using this paper to help me with this. This is part called Nature's Sweetness. And let me pull over some of this paper and show it to you. It's just so beautiful. Now, this piece is one that you can cut and make six cards uh, from it and be pretty simple to do if you need something that uh, you need to be very quick and uh, you could also enhance it a little bit with a little bit more if you wanted to. So you can see a look here of some of these. Uh, it features uh, pecan pie, pebbled path, basic white, and then when you turn these pieces over you can see all of the gold in there. Isn't that pretty? So flecks of gold in there. So if you are a person who likes a little bit of glamour to your cards, this paper will do it for you. Uh, you can find this paper in our catalog, the um, April, I'm sorry, January, April mini catalog. And it's going to be on pages 40 all the way to, to 43. So this is one of those mega suites that Stampin' Up! has from time to time, and we're going to be using uh, many parts today. Not all of the parts, but many parts today in the card that we're going to be making. So this paper is called Nature's Sweetness. So let's get started, and let me tell you that this card is for the North Carolina Demonstrators Blog Hop. We have that hop uh, the last Sunday of every month, and uh, it's at 8 p.m. We have some really talented stamping uh, stampers in North Carolina, and I uh, hope you'll join us or take a look at the other people if you go to my blog post. So our theme this month is tools, and I'll be talking about some of the tools that I use as I make this card. One of the first ones is cardstock. Well, we also talked about designer series paper. But cardstock is another one of the tools that we use. Stampin' Up! has beautiful cardstock. It's thick and it coordinates all of the things, coordinate throughout the, the uh, offerings of the company. I'm also going to bring in another big tool we, we need desperately is the paper trimmer. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut for the base of the card. I'm going to use our regular standard 8.5 by 11 paper. And I'm going to put this at 4 and a fourth, lining it up at the top. And you can see it comes down and uh, use the lines to make sure everything's straight. And we'll cut that out. This actually cuts enough for two cards. But we're going to cut this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to pull out this little arm that we have. And I'm going to be cutting this at nine. So I'm going to place this in on the nine. And we'll cut this little piece off. And then uh, we also have a score blade. We're going to need to score this at five and a half. So let me put that there. I'll move the cutting blade out of the way and we'll score that. Once I fold this, and I'm going to use another tool that we all need, a bone folder. Uh, I'm going to use that to burnish my fold. And I look to make sure my paper is still folded straight. Even though I scored it, it could be off just a little bit, and I want everything to be straight. Okay, so this is the first part. It's a standard four and a fourth by five and a half. Okay, 
So now I have another part that I need. I'm going to bring in another piece of paper. Now I could get this out of my leftover, but I'm going to make another card, so I don't want to mess that piece up. And this is another 8.5 by 11, but I plan on making some multiples of this. And all I need from the 8.5 inch side is to cut a 2 inch piece. So now I'll be able to cut several of those down there, in fact four I believe, uh, for other cards that I plan on making. Now I'm going to also score this. I can fold that in now. And I'll be scoring it at two and an eighth from each end. That's just an easy way to remember it. All right. So when I fold these and score them in, or and use my bone folder, again I'm looking to make sure that this is all straight, and it should meet in the center, and it does pretty good. So I'm going to. Look at these for straightness and use my bum folder. Now usually when I make a card that like this, I will go ahead and decorate the parts before I put them together. But this time I'm not going to do that. This piece is going to fit behind here. We'll make sure it's straight and then we'll glue that in. But something important is to make sure that my barn doors are going to close. But wait a minute. It's not. It's not going to go on there. This, you have to take into account the fold. So I'm going to need to trim this base a little bit so that my doors will fit back there and fold the right way. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually line it up with this, this line right here. I'm not going to cut very much at all. I don't know how much that is, but it's not much. I'll cut that. You can see it's just a little bit. And now I'm going to try it again and see if that was enough to trim. So let me put that in there again, and we'll try to do our folding, and that, that is still a little bit tight, so I'm going to cut the tiniest bit again. I don't know if I even need to cut that much. I'm just going to come over, and I'm just going to put it the tiniest bit past that cutting line and see what happens. Okay, so I didn't cut it much there, but let me try it again and see if it's going to fit. Okay, that will fit. That will fit. So I'm going to go ahead and add the glue back here. So I'm just going to glue this part right in here. I'm trying not to be real heavy on my glue. I don't want it to seep out. Oops. So I'm going to add this in here, line it up along the bottom, make sure my doors will close, and I think we'll have it. This should come down and meet here. So I think we have our base, and it's in working condition. We are ready to start uh, decorating our things. So, for the top part of this, I'm going to use, actually, that's not what I'm going to use. Let me get a piece of paper. Sorry about that. I pulled out a different piece. I'm going to be using this piece that has looks like writing on there, and some of it is in pebble, pebbled path, and some is in pecan pie. So um, I'm going to cut that at four, I believe. So I'm going to bring a ruler out, and yes, I think even though I tripped uh, or clipped some of the side off, I think four 
will work just fine for that. So I'm going to put this in my trimmer and cut that at four. And now we need to figure out how long to cut that. So I'm going to bring in a ruler again. And it should be, let's see, yes, I think three and three eighths is what we will do that. So let me cut that at three and three eighths. And we're going to hope that that will fit right in there on our paper. Yeah, it will. Now I'm going to write that down. I had left that off a while ago when I was doing some writing. And so I put DSP, and these are the small pieces, but you're going to need one that is four by three and three eighths. And you only need one for that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that to my card. And I want to show you something. This writing on here, I don't know if you can really see it that clearly, but it has writing, as I said, in Pebbled Path. And to get that writing uh, facing the right way, it will go this way. Now, if you're looking at the pecan pie, you have to turn it the other way. So that, uh, that was a little confusing to me. I want the uh, Pebbled Path to be facing up. So that's the way I want to place it in my card. So I'm just going to go around that with my glue, and then this will go this way. So you might look at it one time and uh, think, oh my gosh, I put that upside down. In fact, I did, <laughs> I did that on the uh, this card. I cut another piece and glued it on top, and then I realized I probably... Did, did the same thing. So this part is made now, and we need to decorate our little doors. And for that, we're going to use this piece. And you do want to look at that because the writing is, can't really tell a whole lot about what it says. You can pick up a word here and there, but the writing does go in a certain way. And I cut this at two inches. And then I'm going to cut it at one and seven eighths, and we're going to hope that I've got it where it goes the right in the right direction. So one and seven eighths, and one and seven eighths. All right, we will hope. If not, I've got another piece sitting here to work with. So this will go in our card. Yay! here and then on the other door. So I'm going to bring in my glue, which is another tool that we use is adhesives. Couldn't do without those, could we? So I'm going to put that here. And I did it while the card was open just to help me with placement. And let's make sure I've got it going the right direction. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and do this other one. Now another tool that you may have seen me using a little bit is our grid paper. Uh, I, I really need that to help me see that everything is straight um, and cut to size. So while I can look at this, I don't think you can see the bottom of my lines though, and just make sure that my card is five and a half and, and that kind of thing. So here we have our card and we'll begin to decorate and I'm going to go ahead and put the piece on the inside, I think. So I've got a piece already cut here that's four by five and a fourth which is our standard size that we would put inside a card. But remember, I cut this one down a little bit. So I'm going to lay it in here. And I think the width is fine. Actually, I think I am going to cut it down a little bit so that it will measure about the same from top and bottom. So I'm going to just 
do the side about that same amount that I cut off of the card itself. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, that will fit. That will fit just fine. Now I'm going to, uh, I think I am going to wait about putting that in because I'm going to uh, emboss a little bit on that in a few minutes. So I'll just put that to the side. We're here. And we are ready to talk about the focal point of our card. So I'm going to bring in another tool. And this tool are, is dies. We have zillions of sets of dies. Well, maybe not zillions, but a lot. And uh, this one is new. It's from Thoughtful Expressions. And look at those. Those are just must-haves. I'm going to use this one and I'm going to use the largest one to cut. And I'm going to be using this paper. And I want this to be a little bit more substantial. So I'm actually going to cut a piece of white at the same time out of that. So I'm going to bring in, you guessed it, another tool. And it's our cut and emboss machine. I can't, I can't function without having that for my card. So I'm going to bring that. You have your base. The you have this. Uh, what do they call that? I'm not sure what they call it. But you have that plate, plate number two, and then plate three, where I'm going to place my papers. And I think I can cut these at the same time and it shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm going to place this here. All right, and I think I'm going to be okay with this without putting any kind of tape or anything down to hold it. How careful is I put this down and we're just going to roll this through. Now, I'll often roll it twice anyway to bring it back to me where, where I am. But because I'm doing two pieces, I'm going to roll that back again. And yes, it did cut. So I can just leave those together. And let me put this back over here. And we'll be using that again in a few minutes. And uh, I'm going to put that back and my dies so I can keep up with everything. So let me put that back. And I'm going to glue the two of these together. And I want them to match perfectly and they should because they were cut out together. So I need to move that over a little bit. That's why I like to use this glue because I can manipulate with it. Maybe, maybe not this much, but uh, I am having a little bit of trouble getting those matched up. Let's see how that works. All right, it's a little bit off down here at the bottom, but let me see. I'm just going to make a little trim on that. Now, I didn't plan on having to do that, but sometimes you just have to make some changes to make things work. So I'm just going to kind of trim even with that edge. I don't want to cut that edge. I can help it. Okay. Probably an extra step that wouldn't be necessary if you get it <laughs> straight the first time. Okay, now I want to decorate this and I'm going to bring in a piece of paper from the designer series paper 
and you can see that it has these pieces and there are dies that will cut that out. I'm going to bring in the lovely and sweet dies and that is going to cut out this piece right here. It also will cut out this piece right here. So I'm going to color that with my blends and I'm going to use soft seafoam. Sorry, I had to take off a jacket. It's getting hot in here. Uh, but I want to talk to you for a minute. I started coloring this because I thought, well, it takes so much time to color on the video. I hate to take up so much time. But if you really look at these, you can see the ink has run out over the edges. And maybe not so much here. I was trying to be more careful. So when I colored it, I used the large end. You can see it has a large end and then more of a bullet end. And I really think it bled more when I used the large end. So I'm going to color this, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to do it all in front of you and hope for the best. It's not that easy to color under a camera, but we'll see. And I'm going to try not to go so close to the edge. Maybe not doing so great on that. We're going to try, and then I can just color in the inside. So I just tried to outline it a little bit, and then color in the inside. Actually, my hands are shaking a little. You've got me nervous. I really haven't done a video in a little while. Uh, so thank you for being uh, patient with me. But it really is kind of filling in that area out to the edge a little bit better. Let me turn this one. And then we'll color that in. But I think maybe that does help a little bit about it going over the edges. If that's, oops, I think I messed that one up. Hopefully people aren't going to look to see how great it looks. And my thought on that is if someone looks at it and they think, oh my gosh, look how she did that. It's just not good enough. Then I think... They deserve to be disappointed if they're going to look at it that close and hope that uh, hopes that you're perfect because guess what? Most of us are not. And it is handmade. So I'm about to get these and I can't can't say that it looks the best. But maybe not too bad. I am kind of surprised at how much that is filling up the space. I think this these may this may be a pretty new marker. Okay, so that was with your light sea foam, and then I'm going to add. Now I don't claim to be great at coloring and blending, but I'm going to add at the base of these. A little bit of the darker and a lot of times I don't even go back and blend all that a lot because they do kind of sometimes fill in on their own now another thing that you could do besides just doing that up a little ways is uh, to kind of go over some of the veins in there but I don't know that I'm oh I forgot that one I don't know that I'm gonna do all that I'll just do a little bit of the center 
Okay, so there's our leaves. That's as good as I'm going to do them. And then I'm going to color in the flowers. And I'm using Flirty Flamingo. I'm going to start with the light flamingo and try to color in these. And again, I'm using that smaller tip. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the darker Flirty Flamingo, and I'm just going to color in the center on that. Now I'm going to go ahead, while I'm coloring, and color this flower right over here. So I'm just going to color with the light and then I'm going to go back with the dark in the center and I think I might just do these little extra out here now is that a leaf or is that a flower I think it's a flower and I'm just going to do it with the lot the dark as well I think And then this is a, I think it's supposed to be a vanilla bean plant. And uh, so these are the seeds. And I'm going to color those with uh, pecan pie. You know, some people say pecan. Some say pecan. In my area, we all say pecan. Unless you've moved in from somewhere, I would say. And I did just a mess up with the edge of that one. I hope you'll forgive me. Okay, so we are ready to... I think I'm going to get these little buds right here with that. And I'm not going to worry so much with the, uh, the stem. Okay, so I am going to cut these two out. And I'm just going to get my scissors and kind of cut around that. Now I'll probably finish this other one at some time and use it. Okay, so let me bring in my machine, but first of all, I'm going to be using this from Lovely and Sweet, and the little flower I'm going to be cut, cutting from Notes of Nature, so I don't know why they split that up between two different die sets, except maybe they wish you would buy them both, but um, that's how they did it. So I'm going to uh, move those out of the way and bring back in the machine and uh, I'm going to I am going to use some tape to hold these in place so I'm going to put this one here and you need to look all around because you might get one piece all done and look down and the stem is all wrong or something. So you really have to kind of watch out. So this is just some tape. I don't remember what they call this now. It's just scotch tape that's removable. Maybe it's removable tape. I'm not sure. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And I might could cut. I'm going to wait on the other one. I'm sorry, I just hit the camera. Well, I just hit the hit everything. Let me turn this a little bit more. And I'll straighten it all up in a minute. Okay. So here is 
this one. Let's see how I did. Okay, not bad. Not bad. So I'll put that aside and I'll pull my tape off. Put that aside. And I'm going to put this piece underneath the other because I'm using this for that little latch. And I want uh, I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put my tape to hold it. Let me get my top layer. And I'm just going to come, come back with that. And I think that should be all of our cutting. So let me move this out. Let me straighten everything up again. There we go. And I'm going to remove that tape. Yeah, I meant to look that up again. I think it's just Scotch removable tape, and I've got it on my tape holder like this. And then I'm going to glue those two pieces together. What would we do without our adhesives, without our glues? Gotta have it. Okay. There we go with that. And let me move that away. All right, so we're going to get our label that I have misplaced. Where would I have put that? You wonder, can you get through one card without <laughs> losing something? I don't know how you are, but I just have to, to look for stuff all the time. Okay, I'm going to bring in my uh, dimensionals and add those to the card or to not to the card but to the uh, uh, cutout. I'm going to put this little piece out here. I know that I have the mini dimensionals. I often uh, find that I've already cut some of these in half. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I don't have my minis with me right now. So I'm going to put some here and one here and one out here. And of course the big ones will fit in places. So I'm going to put that over here. And I think that might, might do it. Maybe I'll just put a little bit here and here. Okay. Well, well, one of our other tools that we have is the take or pick tool. So I'm going to take this and turn my end around so that I have the pokey part. Mine's kind of dirty, I see. And I'm just going to pull up some of these. Might do better to use the same size. And I think I have this one and this one. I think that's all of them. Yeah. So this is going to go here. Like that. Okay, I was actually looking to see if I had any dimensional sticking out. And luckily I don't right there. So now we are ready to uh, add the sayings to our card. So I've got the inside here, and then I'm going to use this uh, for the other saying. And we're going to be doing some embossing uh, for this. So I'm going to bring in my gold embossing powder. Now you have to purchase this in a three pack.
and I really wish you didn't, but sorry. And this would be from your metallics, and um, that has gold, copper, hmm, and silver. So, and I'm going to use an embossing buddy to put some here and some up here. Now, I'm going to tell you that sometimes I have a love-hate feeling toward embossing. I feel like I'm either wonderful or not. So hopefully this is a good day. Now I'm going to be using the Softly Sophisticated stamp set. This is one of the celebration offerings. It's a bundle. It comes with this embossing folder, which is quite beautiful. This is if you have a $100 USA purchase. You can pick this bundle for free during celebration. And we're going to be using Hello There. And then on the inside, what did I use? You're in my thoughts. So these two are what we're going to be using. And we need Versamark for this. So I'm going to I'm going to ink my stamps this way. When I'm embossing, I tend to not add too much if I uh, ink it that way. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink up this one. And it's going to go on our inside piece. There. You're in my thoughts. And uh, we'll be adding powder here and powder here. Just going to do that. Okay, I think that looks all right. I'm going to move my powder out of the way. Get that a little, ugh, that hello looks a little iffy. I did a, a blue on them. So I think I might do the powder over that again. And see if it does better. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Now I'm going to hook up my heat tool. So let's talk about embossing. You have several tools you need for that. You need your Versamark. You need the embossing buddy, which now comes in a kit. And you need your powder. And you need a heat tool. Quite a bit, quite a bit of tools. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm sorry. Uh, it will make a noise, but hopefully we won't take forever. It will have to warm up just a little bit. And hopefully we're going to end up being okay. I'm still not warm enough yet. Okay, I think I didn't turn it high enough. There we go. I didn't think that sounded like it was loud enough. And here we go, we're starting to change over to the gold. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. And then we're going to do this one. That might be a bit heavy, but we're going to go with it. All right, we've got that. So I am going to go ahead and add um, this to the inside of my card. With my glue, let me bring this over. And this is going to go 
right in there. Okay, we'll add something else in there in a few minutes. And then this one, I'm going to cut, just fussy cut around it. Um, some people don't like to cut, cut fussy cut, cut. I don't mind doing it. I, I kind of don't get into the grooves sometimes as well as I should, but as long as I'm happy with it, that's all that matters, right? So let me... So there we go. And this one is going to go right across here. And I think I can just add glue for that. And I'll put it, it's, it's actually probably going to cover up our little buds we colored there, but that's okay. So we'll put it right in here. Now I want to add this to the card. I want it to be straight and I want it to be in the center and part of it is going to go down below the doors to kind of hold those shut. So I'm going to put my um, dimensionals above there and uh, I'm going to use the big ones on that. Let me just come over here, it might be easier without those halves around. I think I'll just do that. All right, and we'll just pull those off with our Take Your Pick tool. Okay, so I want them, I want it to be straight. I want it to be centered. I want it to come down below that line a little bit. Okay, ah, oh, that did it. So no, no dimensionals go below. And I always get these things on and think that doesn't look straight. But I'm just going to leave it for right now. So I'm going to put another dimensional behind here on the fatter part. And I'm going to put it here so that this will flip under, or this will hold. I thought it might hold the card shut a little bit better. I'm not sure that it does, but I kind of like that down there anyway. And you can just kind of flip that under there, flip it out. Okay, so I think what we have left to do, I've decided that I'm going to add some embellishments to this one. And this is from the In Color, uh, dots uh, for this past year and I'm just going to add a couple uh, let's see I'm going to add them in this part because they won't show up on that gray so much or that pebbled so I'll put one here and I'll put one out here maybe there what do you think there's the difference between the one with none None, no embellishments and one with them. Okay, now in this one, I added another piece of the paper. And let me find my paper here. Now they do have a die that cuts that out. Let me figure out which one it is. Okay, I believe it is this one from The Lovely and Sweet. So I should have cut that out already when I was doing the other, and I didn't. And here, this one right here. So I could just cut it um, with my scissors, with my snips, another important piece of card making. But I am, I'll just pull this in. I'm sorry I hit the, the camera again. We're almost done. And... I will put, sorry, I will put this here. Okay. 
and I am going to uh, use some tape to hold that and we'll run this through real quick I can tell I'm going to knock everything so let me move it a little okay we'll move all that out of the way take that tape off carefully uh, here's our piece and I will just bring in this card and we'll glue that now I could color that I'm just not going to take the time to do it I didn't on the uh, sample uh, but you can still color that if you want to, of course. So here we are. This is our card with the uh, swinging door. Um, or double dutch door. Okay, and I don't think that one is going to stay shut. Maybe as well as that first one I did, but that's okay. It gives you an idea to try. So let me shut mine, original. And I think it's probably in how I placed it. Let's move that, see if we can move that. Okay, that dimensional is going to come up. I think I'll do it like that. Nope, not any better. So we're okay. So here are my two cards. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll try it. This is an easy way to make the swinging doors or the double dutch doors uh, without having to do a lot of, of trimming, what I kind of think of blind trimming. Uh, but it's very easy to do. Thank you very much for joining me. Love to create.typepad.com. I'm happy to help you with uh, any kind of purchases that you might want to bake. Uh, make and there is uh, a link to my blog post and I'm also going to put these measurements uh, just under the video in the comments. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.